Hi, and welcome to Embedded Systems Course, Prototyping with Arduino Uno. In this video, I'm going to discuss some of the prerequisite knowledge that you need to know in order to progress in this course. Typically, if you are an electrical, electronics, or a computer engineering student, you already have a good background on analog and digital electronics, as well as basic circuit connections via breadboard or even printed circuit boards. But if you are in the field of computer science, information technology, or information systems, you need to learn at least some of the basic principles in electrical and electronic components and circuit connections. You need to have a good grasp on relationship between voltage, current, and resistance in a series and parallel circuits. And you need to know how to read circuit diagrams and implement it in breadboard to test your prototype. So let's begin. For this activity, you will be needing a breadboard at least three resistors with different values. Mine I have 10 kilo ohms, 1 kilo ohm, and 220 ohms. Three LEDs, two tactile switches, a couple of connecting wires, and a 9 volt battery with cap. If you already have your Arduino Uno board, you can use it as a power source. We are not going to use it yet for this demonstration, so all you have to do is plug it using the USB cable provided. You can even use your power bank if you don't want to connect it to your computer's USB port. You just have to be aware that when you use your Arduino board this way, it can only supply either 5 volts or 3.3 volts, unlike with this 9 volt battery. The multimeter is optional, as I will just use it to show you the actual measurement of the voltage and the resistance as we connect our circuit. When dealing with circuit connections, the most important thing that you need to understand is the difference between series connection versus parallel connection. Consider this given diagram. The one on the left shows a sample connection in series and the one on the right is a sample connection in parallel. There are plenty of electrical and electronic symbols to represent all devices and components, but let's limit it with the basic. This is a symbol for your battery with the positive terminal and the negative terminal. This is a normally open push-button switch, so when you push, it closes the connection. A resistor. Resistors don't have polarities, meaning no negative and positive terminals. Light-emitting diode, or LED, with positive and negative terminals. It will emit light as the current flows through it. Of course, the line represents the electrical wire, if you see junctions like this, it means these wires are connected. So let us start with a very simple connection. Consider this diagram, a 9 volt battery with its positive terminal connected to a 1 kilo ohm resistor. The other pin of the resistor is connected to the negative terminal of the battery to close the circuit connection so that the current can flow. Now, some diagrams will show you that the current flows from the positive terminal through the circuit and into the negative terminal. This is known as conventional flow, which is commonly used by engineers in their diagrams. On the other hand, the electron flow, which is the actual flow of the current, wherein electron flows from the negative terminal through the circuit and into the positive terminal. But don't be confused, both notations are widely acceptable and it doesn't matter, it does not affect the actual values of your electronic components in the circuit. So to implement this connection, we can actually do something like this. Simply hold the positive and the negative terminals of the battery and connect it to the resistor. But of course, if you have several components, it will be impossible for you to hold everything. So in that case, we need something that can hold these components and this is the main purpose of breadboard. It comes in different sizes depending on the number of components and complexity of your circuit connection. To use your breadboard, you must understand how these tiny holes are internally connected so that you can place your components properly. Some have labels like positive and negative, but others don't have anything printed on it. But it doesn't matter, it is just a suggestion. What matters is for you to understand which holes are internally connected and which are not. These two sets of horizontal holes at the bottom and at the top of this breadboard are connected in this manner. This line is connected up to this line, but as you see, there's a gap in the middle. So meaning, if I place a wire here and at the other end, these two lines are not internally connected. And if you want to connect it, you must place a jumper wire in between this gap. Same goes with the other set of horizontal holes on top of it. 
Thus, you can apply the same connection if you want. However, the holes in the middle are connected vertically, meaning these lines are internally connected and I can place my components anywhere in these vertical holes, and the connection will be the same. However, there is a horizontal gap in the middle, which means that the upper holes are totally not connected to these lower holes, and if you want to connect these vertical lines, you must place a jumper wire. So, as an example, these two wires are not connected, but if I move this green wire here, these two are now connected. Similarly, these two wires are connected, and if I move this green wire to a different vertical holes, these two are no longer connected. So, to connect this given diagram in this breadboard, I can do something like this. This is a closed circuit connection wherein current flows from the negative of this battery to the resistor and into the positive terminal. I can also connect it like this. It has the same meaning and it doesn't change the circuit diagram. I can even do this as well as this. So it means you are free to implement your own circuit connection the way you want it based from the given diagram. Now, let's have an example of a series circuit connection and explain to you the principles behind it. Given this diagram, a battery, and three resistors connected in series, I can implement it in this way. So, the rules in a series circuit connection are as follows. First, the sum of the individual voltage drops is equal to the total supplied voltage. So, for example, if I measure this battery directly from a voltmeter, I can read 7.95 volts. Well, actually this battery is kind of old and it's no longer supplying 9 volts. Quite degraded already, but it can still be used for this illustration. Now, if I connect it back and measure it again, I am reading 7.88 volts, which is a bit lower than the previous reading of 7.95 volts. Well, that's normal, as there are some voltage loss affected by various factors like these wires, this breadboard, and others. But what important is that, if I measure this individual voltage across each resistor, like this 10 kilo ohm, the voltage drop is 7.03 volts. In the 1 kilo ohm resistor, the voltage drop is 0.697 volts. And for this 220 ohm resistor, I can read 154.4 millivolt or 0.1544 volts. So, if you add these three individual voltage drops, the total is 7.88 volts, which is equal to the total supplied voltage. The second principle is that the total resistance of any series circuit is equal to the sum of the individual resistances. So, if I have 10 kilo ohm, 1 kilo ohm, and 200 ohm resistors, in series, the total resistance should be 11.2 kilo ohms. I'll disconnect my battery first, and if I measure the total resistance using this multimeter, I can read 11.2 kilo ohms, which proves our second principle. The third principle is that the amount of current that flows in a series circuit is the same through any components. So technically, even if you don't have this multimeter, you can easily compute for the voltage, current, and resistance of any given circuit. If you still recall Ohm's law in one of your subjects, perhaps in high school, it can be expressed in this mathematical formula, V is equal to IR, where V is voltage expressed in volts, I is current expressed in amperes, and R is resistance expressed in ohms. So as long as you know the values of two of the three components, you can definitely compute for the value of the third component. In our sample circuit, if we have 9 volt supply and the total resistance is 11.2 kilo ohms, we simply divide 9 volts by 11.2 kilo ohms, and the resulting total current is 803 microamperes. Then, by applying the third principle, we know that the current flows in series circuit is the same through each component. We can easily compute for the individual voltage drops since we already know the individual resistances. Of course, by applying the same formula, V is equal to IR. Thus, we have 8.03 volts, 803 millivolts, and 177 millivolts respectively. And we know that these individual voltage drops 
when added will result to the total supplied voltage which is 9 volts. That's why a series circuit is commonly known as voltage divider circuit as the total voltage is subdivided to the individual components in the series circuit. Now let's have an example of a parallel circuit. Given this diagram, a 9 volt battery and 3 resistors in parallel, I'll start with the positive terminal of my battery, then connect the 3 resistors in parallel like this. And finally, attach the negative terminal of the battery. So the rules in parallel circuit are as follows. First, the voltage is equal across all components in a parallel circuit. We can verify it using this voltmeter and measure the individual voltages across each resistor. And as you can see, regardless of the resistor's value, the voltage across is the same. Although you may have noticed a significant voltage loss already with our battery, but the point here is, each component is receiving the same voltage, same as with the total supplied voltage. The second principle is that the total resistance in a parallel circuit is smaller than the value of the smallest individual resistance. This is totally different from a series circuit wherein individual resistances are added to get the total resistance. What do I mean? If I measure the resistance across these resistors, you will notice I am only reading 175 ohms. Even though I have 10 kilo ohm, 1 kilo ohm, and 220 ohm resistors, but since they are connected in parallel, the total resistance is diminished to a value which is smaller than 220 ohms, the smallest resistor. We can actually compute for it using this formula. Total resistance is equal to 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And when we substitute the values of the three resistors, 10 kilo ohm, 1 kilo ohm, and 220 ohm, the total resistance is computed as 177.13 ohms, which is very close to what we have measured. Finally, the third principle is that the total current is equal to the sum of the individual branch currents, which means that in a parallel circuit connection, the current are being subdivided instead of voltage. That's why it is commonly referred to as current divider circuit. So if we want to know the actual current of the entire circuit, we can compute for it using the same formula V is equal to IR. Since we already know the total voltage and the total resistance, the total current I is equal to 9 volts divided by 177.13 ohms is equal to 50.81 milliampere. Now if we want to know the individual current that flows through each branch, we use the same formula, V is equal to IR, and the current that flows through this 10 kilo ohm resistor is ideally 9 volts divided by 10 kilo ohm is equal to 0.9 milliampere. The current that flows through this 1 kilo ohm resistor is ideally 9 volts divided by 1 kilo ohm is equal to 9 milliampere. And finally, the current that flows through this 220 ohm resistor is Ideally, 9 volts divided by 220 ohm is equal to 40.9 milliampere. Thus, adding these three individual branch currents will produce a total current of 50.81 milliampere. Now, let's try another circuit that consists of a tactile switch, a resistor, and an LED. So, obviously, this connection is in series, and to implement this connection on breadboard, I'll start with a switch and mount it in the middle. I'll connect the resistor to pin 2 of this 4-pin tactile switch and the other terminal of the resistor to the positive terminal of the LED. And finally, the negative terminal of the LED is connected to the negative terminal of the battery, while the positive terminal of the battery is connected to pin 1 of the switch. So how does it work? Since my switch is normally open, it means that there is no connection from my battery's positive terminal to my 10 kilo ohm resistor. And when I push this button, the internal connection closes, thus allowing the current to flow through this LED and resistor in series, which makes this LED to emit light. This tactile switch has four pins and its internal connection looks like this. As you can see, pin 1 and pin 4 are internally connected, same as with pin 2 and pin 3. And in the middle is a push button that by default, open, which means not connected. And when you push it, Pins 1, 4 and pins 2, 3 become connected. 
We can verify this by moving this resistor from pin 2 to pin 3 of the switch. And as you can see, it performs similar behavior. However, if I move this resistor to pin 4, which is internally connected to pin 1, the LED emits light right away regardless of the state of the switch because pin 4 and pin 1 are internally connected. And we already have a closed circuit here. So I'll put the connection back to pin 2 and the circuit works as intended. And that's it! Now, I'm going to give you a circuit connection challenge to practice your skills in series and parallel circuit connection. Here, you'll see a circuit diagram 1-A in series and circuit diagram 1-B in parallel. It's okay if you don't have the same values for all resistors, just use one that is close enough. In circuit diagrams 1-A and 1-B, I want you to observe what happens if you push only one of the two switches as compared to pushing both switches simultaneously. I want you to write your observation and draw a conclusion based from what you have observed. So, if you feel that you learned something of value here, please click the like and subscribe button for more circuit and programming tutorials. Again, thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video lectures.